Hi everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at writing a, an equation for a chemical reaction. The reaction that I've selected is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide uh, which was placed into a test tube and then a sample of liver was added. Now the reason for adding the liver is it contains an enzyme called catalase which will break down the hydrogen peroxide producing water and oxygen gas. Now let's take a look at video of this reaction. We can see evidence of the oxygen when the wooden splint is dipped into the test tube. So let's take a look at that right now. So there we go. And we're seeing that that wooden splint is reigniting because of the presence of the oxygen in the tube. Now we're going to take a closer look at this chemical equation, uh, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, so that we can discuss uh, what is the meaning of a balanced chemical equation and what are some different ways that we can illustrate that. All right, so here is that equation for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. We see hydrogen peroxide is listed here with a chemical formula of H2O2. Uh, the arrow indicates that a change is occurring. The things that we have after the arrow are uh, what is produced by the reaction. That is water and oxygen gas. Now, let's uh, take a closer look at this equation. First, we want to identify the reactants. Uh, so that is the hydrogen peroxide. We're identifying that as a reactant, which means this is what we have before the chemical change has taken place. Now, the two substances that we see after the arrow, these are the products of the chemical reaction. And the plus sign uh, tells you that there are, in fact, two different chemical substances. One is a compound, water. The other one is an element, uh, the oxygen gas, which is a diatomic element. Uh, so we've identified the reactant. We've identified the products. Uh, now what we want to do is to take a look at how would we represent this if we were writing molecular structures. So the structure for hydrogen peroxide uh, is that there are two oxygen atoms bonded together with a single covalent bond, and at each end there's a hydrogen atom bonded to those. Uh, now, we would represent a water molecule like this with a central oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms. A diatomic oxygen molecule is two atoms of oxygen which are held together by a double covalent bond. Now, as we look at this, we can see that there's not, uh, things aren't quite matching up correctly with the number of hydrogens. There's two here and two here. But here there's uh, two oxygens over here. On this side, there are three. So we need to find a way to reconcile this information. Um, so here's how we're going to do that. Uh, we need to determine the ratio in which these uh, reactants and products will participate in this particular reaction. So if we have two molecules of hydrogen peroxide, this will allow us to produce two molecules of water and one molecule of diatomic oxygen. And I can see now that the number of hydrogens, one, two, three, four, matches on both sides, one, two, three, four. The number of oxygens, one, two, three, four, matches with the number of oxygens on both sides. So this is how we would write a um, representation of a balanced chemical equation. I'll use a coefficient 2 in front of hydrogen peroxide to indicate that there are in fact two molecules. Um, and then once again we use a coefficient 2 in front of the water molecule to indicate that there are two water molecules being produced by this process. The final thing that we'll take a look at is um, the oxygens. There's only one molecule of diatomic oxygen which is produced. We don't need to write a coefficient here. That's implied. So we'll leave the equation written 2H2O2 yields 2H2O plus O2. Please note that these numbers, 2, 2, 1, are ratios, uh, so we can think about this in terms of number of molecules. We can also use this in terms of the number of moles of reactants and products that participate in this reaction. 